If I call, so I have an important announcement. Um, there's been a tragic incident involving Professor Sir and Professor Van Rennes. Uh, Professor Van Rennes was riding his unicycle near the lake, uh, where he collided with Professor Sir on his windsurfer. Uh, both are badly hurt, so and so badly that they no longer remember how to write assembly code. Uh, they keep on muttering Visual Basic. Um, so in true <laughs> hacker tradition, we took them to the systems lab, uh, where they're currently looking through Raspberry Pi documentation. To speed up their reincarnation, uh, I need your help. <laughs> so this, uh, <laughs> this is a very risky procedure. Uh, some people come back intact, but some people, uh, they come back um, kind of possessed by the most evil force on Earth. Um, so now this evil force has been called by many names, uh, Beelzebub, Shaitan, the Devil, Microsoft Knowledge Base. <laughs> but the name he goes by around hackers is BSOD, Blue Screen of Death. When BSOD takes over a hacker, he immediately loses all critical thinking and becomes a programmer. So, let it dim the lights. So please repeat after me. In the name of Hor and Dijkstra. May the hacker elders bring back our professors. Free from the evil Bisod. Free from the evil Bisod. With Mesa Semantics. With Mesa Semantics. Back as computer scientists. Back as computer scientists. So they may synchronize correctly. So they may synchronize correctly. Behold! Oh! and slung some sick MongoDB code, I just built a Bitcoin bank in one afternoon. Sure, it keeps going down. The accounts never add up, but we were first to market. People who try to get code right are such an advantage, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no, he came back as a programmer! Run! <laughs> Well, I come bearing gifts, specifically stock options, and not the worthless Facebook kind, but stock <laughs> options that appreciate in value. And I promise you, not just riches, but fame and glory, and coverage, and TechCrunch, and Gawker. All you have to do is join forces with me and my master, Bisod. Do not listen to him! <laughs> Follow the Twelfth Commandment, and deliver us from evil, and send Bisod's infidels to the hell of race conditions where they belong. <laughs> Look, this class has taught you so many rules, so many little conventions, so many little details, so many opportunities to lose points. You should not follow any of these conventions. Things go so much faster if you just make up your own. My lifting buddy Jebediah, he was an electrician. He found a spool of pink wires, wired up his house and overnight. You can't do that if you try to follow all the, all the, uh, the conventions for wiring properly. Behold commandment zero, thou shalt live and die by coding conventions for synchronization. Remember, when Jebediah, he wanted to build an, an addition to his outhouse, he cut into a live wire, uh, left wire with his metal clippers and was promptly fired, fright, in a flash <laughs> of hellfire. For that is the fate that awaits you when you do not follow conventions when writing synchronization code. Cool story, bro. <laughs> we all get a finite number of keystrokes in life, and every keystroke you spend on these conventions, every keystroke you spend typing out a long variable name, it's a keystroke you could have spent on chat roulette, sexting random strangers. <laughs> Join my master, and name every semaphore S or Sema. 
If you use more than one, you can call them Sema 1, Sema 2, and so forth. And it's perfectly fine to call your Sema your Sema. That's how you establish your, your territory. Thou shalt name thy synchronization variables properly. We gave you all names and net IDs. So should you also name your variables? So, so should you also name your variables? Would you name your kit K? Kid, kid one, kid two. <laughs> Make names unique. Make names unique and self-documenting, such as number of free slots or disk is ready to roll. Names like Sema one and Sema two lead to synchronization hell. All it takes is a typo, uh, typo, and Bisa shall rule. All right. Well, this bro here is all about rules and regulations. These are for the little people. You gotta live a little. We all know that there are times when you're dying to take a peek at things you're not supposed to look at, like the count inside that semaphore, or the length, the length of the queue inside the condition variable. So go ahead, take a peek. Change the interface if you have to. You know you want to. <laughs> Thou shalt not violate the abstraction boundaries provided by synchronization primitives. Nor shalt thou try to change the semantics of well-established synchronization primitives, and thou shalt look with disdain upon those who do. There are dangerous lands where basic synchronization primitives provide additional interfaces. For instance, the tongue of Python allows you to check if a lock is held without acquiring it. Such extended interfaces are the work of b -Sod. <laughs> there is a lesser known eighth level of hell in Dante's Inferno reserved for its users. There he goes again, telling you what to do. He's not the boss of you. You're a grown-up. You can do whatever you like. Next, he's going to tell you to stay away from semaphores. If you can be trusted to vote, you can be trusted to use semaphores. The Second <laughs> Amendment guarantees the right to own AK-47s and semaphores. And to the babies. So use semaphores every chance you get, and show the world your ability to handle powerful stuff. Thou shalt use monitors and condition variables instead of semaphores wherever possible. We gave you monitors and condition variables so you do not have to worship <coughs> the ancient gods of semaphores. You know that monitors and condition variables are designed to make the code self-documenting. Don't be led astray by ancient scriptures. Okay, fine. Look, my master b he doesn't really care if you use monitors and condition variables. But some problems are better solved with, with semaphores. And some parts of the problem sometimes are better solved with semaphores, and other, pro other parts are better solved with uh, condition variables. So mix and match them. This is America, land of the free and the brave programmer. Thou shalt not mix semaphores and condition variables! You belong to the creator's chosen tribe of hackers who can write correct synchronization code. While you need to understand semaphores so you can traverse the land of the infidels who use them, you shall not mix and match their customs with ours. Such interspecies coupling are certainly bound for hellfire. Uh, well, there are times when you just have to wait for something. Like at the gym, me and my buddies often have to wait for the squat rack so we can put curls in it. <laughs> so we just sleep until the rack, until the rack is available. The bro would lose all the street cred if he fell asleep at the gym. Instead, we constantly check and recheck and recheck the squat rack, asking, are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> Same is true for your code. If you're waiting for something to happen, just go into that loop. Thou shalt not busy wait. Be careful of b -Sod and his ways of getting you to spin. For each thread, ask yourself the question, under what conditions that thread will ever block? You must have a concise answer to this question. Look, a monitor is like a jail. Actually, it's worse than a jail. It's a solitary confine confinement for threads. Your threads didn't do anything that requires punishment. When they need to touch some state, they don't really need to be confined to a monitor. Just go ahead and read the shared state. Maybe even modify it. Someone reading the code might not be able to figure out if this is okay or not. But hey, that's their problem. And this goes your job security. If it was hard to write, it should be hard to read. <laughs> state must be protected. On day zero, the creator created state, and it was good. <laughs> but nothing happened. <laughs> On day one, the creator created threats, and there was trouble, because state got corrupted. On day two, the creator created busy waiting, and many threats 
died of exhaustion. <laughs> On day three, the crater created semaphores. But soon the crater got confused by the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> On day four, the creator created monitors and condition variables. And it was good. On day five, the creator changed signal semantics with Hort and Mesa semantics. And it was even better, as it gave the great scheduler more freedom. On day six, the creator took a well-deserved break. Some infidels decided to follow Vsauce and ignore the teachings of monitors. These sinners spend their days using GDB and shall never find peace. <laughs> you, should, you should treat the monitor lock the way I treat traffic lights and the yellow lines in the middle of the road. They're advisory, not mandatory. If the man wanted you to not cross the median, he would, have, he would have not have drawn a painting on the road, he would have built a wall. So grab the monitor lock whenever you like and release it wherever you like. Thou shalt grab the monitor lock upon entry to and release it up and exit from a procedure. If the grabber release the monitor lock more than once in your program, the monitored state can change in between, which creates the opportunity for bugs to creep in. Thou shalt have one, and exactly one lock. For any number of locks, more than one is the number of the beast. Look, he wants you to grab that lock so you can maintain some fancy, confusing thing he calls an invariant. In real life, there are no invariants except death and taxes, and if you join Vsauce, he can help you with the death part. So forget about invariants, they're so hard to specify, and maintaining them is such a pain. Just get the code approximately right, maintain the state in whatever manner you just happens to work for you. Clearly specified invariants are for the weaklings. Honor thy st shared state with an invariant, which your code may assume to hold when a lock is acquired, and your code must make true before the lock is released. Remember that you created your monitor for, to protect some shared state from conflicting updates. That state shall have placed upon it an invariant. Honor this invariant, so that the days of operation of your program are long. Well, next he's going to tell you to write some code around every wait statement that shows what it's waiting for. We know that if you issue your weights without that, that loop, you can turn condition variables back into semaphores, which is what you wanted to code in the first place. And these fundamentalists, they're all the same, they want to wrap you up. So join BSOD, and your code can enjoy being naked wherever it likes. <laughs> Thou shalt cover thy naked ways. <laughs> Before waiting for a condition expressed in the form of a predicate, you, must, you first have to check if the condition already holds, or you may wait forever. The predicate also clearly documents the reason for waiting. Ignore this commandment, and you may spend your days waiting while nobody will be able to figure out what you are waiting for. That kind of logic will have you being forced to use a while loop around every way. And if, and, it often, and, and if is often fine, you're not going to waste extra 10 cycles rechecking a condition, will you? Thou shalt guard your wait predicates in a while loop. Thou shalt never guard a wait statement with only an if statement. After waiting on a condition variable, the condition you are waiting for is not guaranteed to hold and must be rechecked, or thou shalt burn in the hell of assuming conditions that do not hold. Well, sometimes you gotta wait for two things to happen at the same time. So, for example, to make my protein shake, I need both milk and strawberries. I just wait for my roommate to deliver the milk, and then I wait for strawberry season. That's pretty much the same thing as waiting for both at the same time. Thou shalt not split predicates. When in need of having to wait on two or more conditions to all become true, then their condition variables should be covered by a single while loop that combines the predicates. For if you split predicates and wait for one condition and then another condition, then the first condition may no longer hold by the time the second condition holds. If you'll split predicates, the creator will split D. It's all, it's all about hellfire and brimstone with these types. Join me and the great CEO Visa at our startup. We use cutting edge technologies like Mongo and Cassandra and Windows CE. We release code before it works. We get to spend all our time on social media because we don't need to spend our time writing correct code. We got swag, we got gourmet chefs, we got clueless VC backing us. We got constant coverage on Acker News, whether it's good news or news of our systems messing up. Well, press is good press. Join us and we shall IPO. <laughs> Thou shalt help make the world a better place for the Creator's mighty vision. That's the last commandment. <laughs> commandment number 12. Thou shalt help make the world 
a better place. Guide your brothers and sister programmers educated elsewhere through the valley of their limited synchronization APIs to a modern future that lives up to the creator's vision, for you are their keeper. Once you've mastered these basics, you are destined for heaven, where you will get 52 processor cores all to yourself and get to break every commandment herein for eternity. This is ludicrous. Why wait for the afterworld of as many processor cores as you like? Vsod delivers and he delivers right now in this world. Join us at the nearest data center. It's time to banish you to where you belong. All rise. All rise. And follow me to deliver us some Vsod. This is the creator's prayer. All copy me. Lock dot acquire. Lock dot acquire. <laughs> oh, great creator of synchronization primitives. Oh, great creator of synchronization primitives. Give us the discipline <laughs> to follow good coding conventions. Give us the discipline to follow good coding conventions. And the wisdom to select good names for synchronization variables. And the wisdom to select good names for synchronization variables. We shall resist evil and not violate thy abstraction boundaries. We shall resist evil and not violate thy abstraction boundaries. Protect our shared state with monitors. Protect our shared state with monitors. And resist the temptations of semaphores and busy weight. And resist the temptations of semaphores and busy weight. We will wrap our weights with while loops. We will wrap our weights with while loops. And honor our invariants. And honor our invariants. For thine is the way to a world without race conditions. For thine is the way to a world without race conditions. In the names of Hoare, Hansen, and Dijkstra. In the names of Hoare, Hansen, and Dijkstra.